Oh, hello everybody. My name is Luke Herne Brown, and this is the Loudmouth Podcast with my lovely co-hosts, Alfie Akers, oh, Ryan Perry. It's the Loudmouth Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We even have this week our beautiful intro. Oh. That intro doesn't get old. I bloody love that. That it is, is not. Of, <laughs> it's, never, it's never it not is, good. It is something of an art piece. So today, I believe, Ryan's already set the theme of what we're going to be talking yeah. about I mean, last week. Yeah, yeah. So um, so if you didn't see last week, um, we are this week <laughs> going to be talking about a film. Uh, a film by the name of Blue Velvet from mm-hmm. 1984 by david lynch spoilers and all uh if you haven't seen the film yet go away uh now go watch the film because we're going to go very in depth uh but also but we're, we're going to go in we're going to go in depth and we're going to touch on the outside we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tear it apart we're gonna tear it apart but if you're watching this um uh like later on after we've done the live then you can just skip forward to when we're not spoiling this um, <laughs> do they have only fans who's josh <laughs> they haven't oh that's my that's my boy josh there ryan um, ryan fans. actually hasn't ryan has an only fans don't you i do well you yeah. most mm. they mostly uh, contribute your feet pictures i mean i thought that was your one um no i i mostly <laughs> share, i've seen much more of a boring amount amount of luke's feet <laughs> In the past yeah. few days that I've seen off, uh, seen any of anyone's really. Yeah, it's worrying. That's the quarantine, isn't it? It just gets the best of all of us. Mm. Oh god, yeah. No. So well, speaking uh, speaking of kinky kinky things, blue velvet boys. <laughs> yeah, I I have literally just finished this film. Um, yeah. Like yeah. ten minutes ago. Um, <laughs> I literally I was like, I uh, can't go into it, but I ended up managing to finish it on time. Um, I'm not quite sure what I make of it yet, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, Fresh I'm... in the head. Yeah. Yeah. It's still, it's the burn still stings. Do you know what I mean? It's sure, quite yeah, a, so. it's quite a, when you finish it, you're sort of like, oh, okay, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot yeah. to unfold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So shall we just delve straight into the nitty gritty well, boys? I, I think you should take it away, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is like my second time. I think now watching this Mm. or maybe third, I don't know. But um, I found the film about maybe a year or two ago, because I've always been aware of David Lynch, the man who made this film through um, his show Twin Peaks. I've actually um, got, I've got something special for you, Ron. I also got this ready for today. Really? Okay, go on. Now, if you're playing the movie on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film you'll think you have experienced it but you will be <clears throat> cheated it's a such a sadness i can't hear you, you think you've saying. seen a film on your fucking telephone get real <laughs> david lynch oh. everyone our yeah, special that's guest just... That gives you the taste of what he's like as a, as a human being. So anyway, carry on, Ryan. Twin Peaks. <laughs> yeah, so Twin Peaks, I've known about for ages. That was sort of my introduction to his stuff. Um, bought a box set of it years ago and watched through the whole thing. Love that. Then um, I knew of his uh, filmography, but never never got around to watching all of it. And Blue Velvet was the first uh, feature by him that I'd watched. And uh, <laughs> I... It's what an introduction. It's definitely his most accessible film by a long run, considering I've seen a lot more of his stuff now. Um, yeah. So to, to go over the plot, this guy called Jeffrey um, returns home from college uh, when his father falls ill after like a cardiac arrest or something. It's really abrupt. Like, he's, yeah, it's pretty, it's he's just out in his garden. Yeah. He's like, 
But um, but yeah, he comes back and one day he's out for a walk and he finds an ear, a severed ear in a field and um, decides to report it to the police. And from there, he um, decides to investigate into this mysterious case, even though he has uh, been told not to. It's uh, police's priority now. And uh, things get twisted from there. So um, I'm quite interested in uh, hearing what uh you you thought of uh yeah, alfie because like this is your first watch um yeah I, I know this is luke's second but yeah right uh um, i you yeah. know what it's um yeah i it's a lot <laughs> there's a lot um it is a first, lot to i think it's my well, first david lynch film i think ask him if mm -hmm. he enjoyed it first well yeah did you would you say i did you enjoy it. it i did enjoy mm -hmm. it i thought it was a good film um yeah i very much like enjoyed the characters um mm -hmm. i don't know i i really can't think of what i must say i've there was obviously <laughs> a lot of um a lot of imagery quite some of it obvious yeah a lot well, of, a especially lot. with the colors yeah um, the, the contrast and everything i know yeah. there's one really bizarre thing was that uh what's the least name jeffrey he jeffrey? always seemed yeah, to yeah, wear yeah. black and Sandy mm -hmm. always seemed to wear pink, which I thought yeah. was probably something. So I wrote that down. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought the opening... Nice little bit of mise en scène. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the opening as well. Bang! What a what a what a start. Opening's great. Opening, yeah, an amazing opening. Um, it's very it's like it's very uh, comforting, but at the same time mm -hmm. really disturbing as well. Like yeah, you're, I think you're, it's you're a very, into this sense of like it's a very bliss. interesting place that david lynch chose to put the film in the setting of sort of like american sort of suburban paradise really mm -hmm, wasn't yeah. it everything's very corny and very yeah typical and nothing seems to go wrong and i think it yeah, was quite a, interesting how he put in the middle shot. of all this mm -hmm. yeah go on go on um this sort of crazy lunatic um <laughs> <laughs> <and> <laughs> We got Frank, Psycho Frank. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's psycho, good. It was a good psycho film. Frank. I need to see it again. I think. Yeah, yeah. The the first thing I um I I, I thought about uh, when I noticed on the rewatch is like there's that shot um underneath like the flower bed uh, underneath the ground of all these like ants and mm. termites you know yeah. digging around it and you might, see um, it when it goes mini, into the ear mini mini mm. world. Yeah, that's yeah. like I sort of took it as um like underneath this like paradise, there's like loads of seedy things going on, and this thing with Frank, you know, it's just one of them. It's just like yeah, the first little bit of intrigue into it. Like there could be more dodgy. It's things funny there. how at the end of the film you see one of the robins eating one of these one of the insects. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like it's been that's one of the things that have been destroyed, but mm. there's more to go. There's more to go. Yeah, I, I do have here in my notes a little bit of ASMR crinkling of paper there. Um, something I've found interesting on rewatch is I didn't I didn't really think about it on the first time uh, I watched it because uh, you sort of take it as this is Jeffrey's first sort of um, steps into this dark dark place that he's discovered. But um, I sort of rethought it on the second watch, and I'm thinking, is Jeffrey as perverted as frank in a way because there's a line um mm. that frank says to him after he gets out the car he's like you're just like me and like yeah. of course in a way he he almost like slips into that domestic violence with um with dorothy near the end yes when the... are we are we gonna reveal <laughs> yeah. spoilers um well yeah yeah i think we'll, yeah. we'll just go um mm. in on uh in on spoilers I think that's what we should do. So uh, go watch, go watch Blue Velvet. It's on Netflix. <laughs> the question it's is, though, do we? Is because I don't think everyone we who's watching has seen it. Well, yeah, they can come back later, though. That's <laughs> true. That is true. Um, if if we tell you what for for live people, um, Luke will put in the comments uh, when we've stopped talking about spoilers. Um, if you just mute the, the podcast, and you can come back when uh when we're chatting secretly and safely again yeah <laughs> yeah um <laughs> so, so that's, like, that's a, so that's a little bit perverted right yeah well maybe you're well, just it, like it really... maybe you're just like frank ryan 
Maybe I'm just like Frank. Oh God, good God. <laughs> well, I, I think if anything, I think if we could all relate to a character in it, I'm definitely Dean Stockwell. Dean Stockwell. <laughs> yeah, in Who dreams. Who was that one again? <laughs> yeah, so that's the in dreams character. I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was. He was interesting. What did you think of that scene, Alfie, with the, um, the singing? Well, not singing, lip syncing, and Frank. Oh God! To, Roy, to Roy Orbison. To, Ro to Roy yeah. Orbison in dreams. That was yeah. sort of the, when he takes him on the joyride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That felt uh, weird for the sake of being weird. Um, it just okay. sort of felt quite. It was like, why? Why does this exist? Um, it was kind of enjoyable, but um, I think that I think that's sort of uh, what it's there to do, mm. though. Is like it, you know, you've got to understand how psychologically damaged Frank is and how yeah, perverted yeah. And strange he's, he is. He's fucked up. Yeah, head. yeah. He's, 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 I enjoyed it. I think it made sense, and I think probably the point of the film that scene was to just show there's nutters around and Frank's part of that. Um. Mm. Yeah, I must say it was certainly like, yeah, that whole scene, that whole setting was so bizarre. Yeah, Wait, yeah. David David Lynch films are sort of known to be mm. completely out of this world. So when you watch it, you've got to sort of preempt yourself and prepare yeah. yourself to be completely and utterly weirded out. Yeah, um, and I think it out of like other De uh, David Lynch films, it's probably one of the more tame ones. Um, I'm sure I haven't 100%. seen any other David Lynch films. I don't. Yeah. Know. Um, I mean, if you if you, um, I doubt everyone anyone's watched it because it's quite a, a hard film to get into. But his film Inland Empire is pretty much stuff like um, like the candle transitions when Jeffrey gets knocked out and the in dream mm. scene for like two hours. <laughs> so yeah, like, was, he really does was... lean into his. Uh, experimental side more as he goes on in his filmography so yeah i mean i think it i yeah. still liked it i thought it was an enjoyable film it was it was quite it's a long film though it yeah. was quite long um i started to sort of lose my attention for the last bit but i, I mean to, try to stick with it to be honest i thought i i personally feel it's like um one i mean it is one of his shorter films um but like uh it i, fe I felt like it goes goes by quite quick it does um, actually to be fair yeah like it's it is only just two hours and the first minute is like like a minute long um title card sequence so mm. um you know well, that that flies it, by pretty quick it's not it, to be honest the in, the intro is not a scratch on the shining so <laughs> oh no i i, I yeah. find this way more disturbing than the shining 100 percent. because it's I, too happy well, no, The Shining loses its steam after after the first hour and a half, and then like when you get into Psycho Jack trying to chop up people, it's not that yeah. thrilling anymore. But you know what he's going to do. They like. are quite. They're, they're like fairly like there's some sort of crossover between the two actually in some areas. How would you what, how would you say that? Where whereabouts? I don't know. I just what, that was one of the, the associations I made with it. It's just the way it's made in the sort of drawing everything out very slowly well, i can imagine i can imagine um lynch is definitely inspired heavily by kubrick 100 yeah, yeah. i mean um, there was a there was um there was a great character development actually throughout um, of um blue velvet it was really great because you sort of got to understand all the characters really well um, yeah. and get to know them more importantly um, yeah and it really helped to sort of get a firm because obviously it, it being so long you're going to have to try and get to know the characters to understand yeah. where the yeah. story is going to go. That was one of my, there was one of my favorite instances of that. Cause like, um, Jeffrey says like a couple of times throughout the film, like his favorite, like his beer of choice is Heineken. Yeah. And, um, and he's in the bar that first night with, um, with Sandy and like, mm. um, he offers her the beer and she's like awkward about it she's never drunk it before and then later on he gets to sort of feel what she felt with with frank when he's like heineken that's for pussies you need to drink yeah. up the ribbon like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um i don't know yeah. i thought that was quite a cool like switch and like there's a lot know. of there's a lot of backwards references and scenes that sort of add up like uh sorry spoilers fore but, like, foreshadowing a lot of foreshadowing like so mm. obviously spoilers when uh he's in the 
he's in Dorothy's apartment for the first time and hiding in the closet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. then in the last time, in the last scene of the film, when he, or in the last, like when the, in Frank's death scene, when he <laughs> yeah. was also ends up hiding in the closet, and it's sort of like, oh, it's yeah. sort of lots of different like, I, little throwbacks. I always yeah. find the, I found the the whole Dorothy scene in the whole apartment bit really weird. I I remember watching it and thinking mm. this is really strange. The, um, the first scene with um. Which part of it also? Because well, there's the, well, it's, the first so, half where she discovers Jeffrey, and then the second half where Frank comes in, which is for me the most disturbing part of the film. Well, then there's the bit after it. Oh, what? Where they obviously copulate? <laughs> Sexy time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That 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 second bit after it was quite disturbing because it was it came across as like a weird sort of rapey vibes. Yeah, well, I mean that's definitely what Frank does to her. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, she's obviously got like heavy trauma from it as well because like she asks Jeffrey to beat her and stuff. And yeah, so, yeah, it's pretty fucked. Yeah, it's like it's in her mind now. Like she can't be treated any other way, and it makes you wonder how long um, her husband and son have been kidnapped for as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and how long he's got? Clearly, how long he's had them for? Yeah, it's clearly had to be a long time for her to have that sort of mentality. But yeah, I always yeah. quite like the fact that it was it was very normal. So this is what mm. made it so effective. It's because it was the sort of suburbia, the, yeah. the real natural suburbia, which there was sort of no amiss of weirdness. It yeah, was normal. But it's yeah. like it's like it's like with small villages and stuff. There's always weird <laughs> shit happening. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's I'm always, sure. That, like, I'm like, sure there's a. <laughs> I'm sure like, there's a like... bunch of kinky sex craved addicts where we live, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In all of our yeah, villages. Is. In all of our villages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you do, you, I'm, I'm just thinking sort of like stories you hear about like murders and stuff. Like, yeah, oh, God, yeah. Hmm. Just, it's always where you it. least expect it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I that's... definitely agree. I think that's definitely what one of the, fil- the film does really well is it it's makes one of its themes. Makes everything contrast and look worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 100%. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, that's all I. That's all I had on it so far. <laughs> well, there are any, I, well, one thing there I did any... want to talk about. One thing I did want to talk about as well. Leading on from this is all the music in like the first half is kind oh, of yeah, like an music. old serial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the music is sound is sounds like it's being used in an old nineteen forties serial. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And sure, then yeah. suddenly, after it, it takes that shift from sort of establishing the sort of normal and if we still take it a deep dive into this world the music kind of shifts into its to a different kind of tone especially yeah, after yeah. the that... scene where we meet dorothy singing blue velvet mm-hmm. i think that's in the bar mm, in the bar yeah. i think i see it sort of takes a different turn from there mm-hmm, definitely um were there any performances that you would say you didn't like in it? Laura Dern's character, I know, gets a lot of slack, but I quite enjoy her role as like the person who sort of brings Jeffrey back down to earth. Because mm. there's that scene yeah. in the car where um where she like brings him at ease by talking about like this paradise she had in a dream once. Um mm, yeah. but a lot of people find her character unnecessary, I don't know. Uh especially the plot with her her boyfriend. Um who like sort of is there and then like you know Jeffrey um mm. <laughs> Jeffrey kicks him out of the way but um I think but I think yeah go on I don't know I think I think Je- I think oh, it's hard to say it because doesn't Laura's character also go back link back to this kind of suburbia she he's got Jeffrey's got these two pull factors hasn't he on either side yeah. he's got He's got uh, Laura pulling her, pulling him back, you know, yeah. and then he's got Dorothy pulling him the other way into this twisted world that he's falling into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And the, you can sort of see the conflict, you know. He's he starts out quite fancying Laura. He's sort of in the norm, and then him and Dorothy, him and Dorothy have the affair, um, mm-hmm. and he's tempted, and it takes for Laura to pull him back. One and also he, he sort of still finds um uh Dorothy quite uh scary because like the first mm-hmm. time you know she and him meet, he's got a knife at his at his uh genitalia. And mm-hmm. um 
and like uh she's like still having it off with him so it's like some weird conflict but it's also linked with this cd world it's strange david lynch am i right yeah <laughs> yeah so, i was about um, i was about to play the telephone thing again when you said no, that <laughs> no <laughs> um so if we i think we'll wrap this up now um how about how about we do um, scores, boys? Scores on the doors. What are Ooh. we thinking out of five? I, I haven't written my letterbox review for it yet. No, neither. Um, what I mean, do you guys think? Well, I mean, I I have well, it as one of like my my five out of fives because like, okay, I well, can't con- think of anything wrong with it. Considering it may considering not be enjoyable that... for everyone, but it's also like a important experience. I think. Okay, considering the last time I saw I saw it. I haven't mm-hmm. actually rewatched it because I know it well enough. Last time I saw right. it was about six months ago. Um, <laughs> okay. So my memory is a little bit faded on it, but from what I remember, the only thing which I'd mark it down for was how long it was. I feel like some of the parts in it didn't. There was. It was just felt like a dead end. It just felt like it was going mm. on for the sake of just going on. Yeah. I think I think that definitely helped on a rewatch though for me because like. Um, you know, you can look at those points now and fill in the blanks uh, quite a bit because, you know, you have this new outlook on it once you've seen the film and you can pick up certain things um, like the uh, the uh, references to Jeffrey possibly, you know, being quite a filthy guy like Frank. I was just, I was just reading some of the comments and I've just read uh, this one. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is practically it. I've got all my notes here. <laughs> it's got more notes than me. Look, I've got this much on, and I stopped. I stopped taking notes about in the first half an hour because I just kind of got invested. Into it. I've got, Brilliant. I've got no notes. I've got no notes. So no, no, you, you didn't rewatch your five star, Luke. Five what are you star, thinking? Yeah. I'm gonna give it because it's not my favourite film. No, I'm, I'm well, gonna no, give I know it. That. I'd probably give it a three and a half. A three and a half, okay. Practically, practically, yeah. it, it was done very well. I think mm. it would look good. The lighting was aesthetically oh, pleasing. Yeah, it's a lot of nice colours. Um, lot of colours, the yeah. colour palette, the colour palettes were, were lovely. I'm a sucker for uh, the colour palette. But for me, it didn't really. Be, it wasn't really an all rounder for me. It didn't I mean, really... I know. I I remember you particularly enjoying it when you first watched it. Maybe I didn't. No, I, did, I still enjoyed it. I can imagine you enjoying it more. I'd say people. like a three star is all around a good film. It just didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, I think I'm I'm teetering towards Luke's opinion. I think it was very good. Like it's not mm. a bad movie. It didn't provoke. Like it didn't quite get to me the first time. I sort of thought, well, mm. okay, what's the? Not sure. I think I, didn't, I, I think don't know. I think after I probably. That... I think everything after that first encounter with Dorothy and Frank, like yeah. that is so shocking. You kind of have mm. to like, Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a hard one to, to talk about. I'd probably say highest rating. I'd give it a four um, mm. and lowest a three. So maybe three and a half. Okay. Yeah. I cool. say it's not, not right. a bad film by any means. It just didn't quite pull me in as it's uh, not. Yeah. It wasn't a film, which I would, I would want, it's not something that I'm. So there's films in life where you go, oh, that's a rewatch, definitely. Yeah. For me, mm-hmm. for me, Blue Velvet's <laughs> not really a re rewatch. I just it's sort of, I it was good enough that I remember it, but it wasn't mm. good enough that I want to. I'm like eager to watch it again because it's it is long. Yeah. Uh, but, that, I, but that's not why I'm. That's what not why I'm. You know, shitting on it. Yeah. It's just it, it's a long film, and I don't it feel like long. it went. I don't mean this in like a, a backhanded way as well, but would you also say? Um, you sort of have to read into it a little bit too much for you personally. Um, Cause like there's, no, not a just... lot, there's like, there's a lot of hidden layers to it. Like, yeah, obviously. No, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I just, I think it's, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, just reading some of the comments. Um, I'm just going to put that on the screen. Um, no, no I. You're, you're loving it because it's boosting your ego. <laughs> <laughs> look at you! Look at you grin. <laughs> yeah, well, we did we did film studies together for you know a year, two years. So I've got to use these terms. Um, no, <laughs> it's it was 
not the case. I think it was just I enjoyed it and I I understood the deeper meanings, but it didn't resonate with me because I had no association with it. Mm-hmm, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of partial my I'm partial to more Luke's opinion. I think if it's a very good film, I probably would rewatch it at a later point just so I can sort of try and understand it a bit more. But yeah. I feel like yeah, it just didn't quite do it for me. So probably a three and a half, I'd say. Okay, fair enough. Well, um, that was Blue Velvet. Um, make sure you guys um, have a look for it uh, on Netflix in the UK. I don't it's know all on it Netflix. Elsewhere. It is on Netflix. Um, if, you, uh, if you haven't seen it before, do give it a watch. Uh, let us know what you think. Next week... Um, well, we're going to carry on after this, don't worry. But um, next week, we are going to be talking about uh, a very exciting film trilogy <laughs> that is near and dear to our, our own Luke Hearn Brown's heart. Um, childhood classic! <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a trilogy, So, um, but they're all, all three films are available on Amazon Prime. Luke, would you like to tell everyone what this film series is? I, I will, after this short interlude, kind message oh. from... Now, if you're playing the movie <laughs> on a telephone, you will never what in a this? trillion years experience the film. You'll think you have experienced it, but you'll be <clears throat> cheated. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. <clears throat> So, yeah, um, if you're going to watch this film on anything, don't watch it on iPhone because um, David Lynch will mess you up, <laughs> clearly. No, ne- next week's film is the Big Mama trilogy. We're doing the Big Mama's House trilogy. They are they are all available on, um, on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. Big Mama's House 1, Big Mama's <laughs> House 2, Big Mama's House 3, like father, like son. They're all there. Get ready. We're going to watch the lot. We're going into film detail. You know, nothing <laughs> left untouched. No, so no, no, so so left unturned. Now, Ryan, like, you said, Ryan, you said that Blue Velvet had a lot of underlining messages hidden within, right? You never knew mama. what Big Mama. Big Mama is going to Big Mama for a whole new big, level. Big Mama didn't even didn't just have a man hidden under latex. It has layers. It's like <laughs> an onion. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we've gone. We've gone. From I must five, say, I've I've watched a couple off. clips of the first oh, one yeah. just to see what I was getting myself into, and I am. Um, I'm on the edge of my seat. I cannot wait. You're to start ready. Watching You're ready. Films. Yeah. Like we've gone from high art film to uh, <laughs> to Big Mama's house. It's very exciting. Um, to the answers in the comments currently, no, we will not be doing Tiger King because uh, personally, I find that show uh, abysmal. It's terrible. <laughs> I must um, say, I, I still preferred the Louis Theroux one, which he did with uh, Joe Exotic. Because you have a bias. I do. <laughs> Um, but I yeah, just no. say I'm, I've tried Tiger King, but I'm not, I'm not quite I'm not sold king. yet. When you, when I'm you have king. that many unlikable people, you can't really. Um, well, it's just get behind boring, it. and it's, it's really boring. boring. It's really boring. It's so like, long. It, it's, it's, I think it's, it's eight episodes. Long. It's about eight a episodes zoo. Of, about a tiger like, zoo. It's about, about a tiger zoo. Episodes, and I have no interest in returning. Also, I really do not. I really want to point out how going ugly. nowhere. I want to really point out how ugly it looks. It's a really ugly looking show. <laughs> um, I tell you what, though. I yeah. tell you what. I did see something interesting the other day. You know, a guy called Josh Peters. You know, the guy who used to be mates with. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did uh, the, um, mm. the the only uh, interview with uh, what's uh, what's her name? Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Yeah. Um, Carol yeah. Baskin, bitch. <laughs> um, he, he, he did the only uh, interview with her, um, All right. and that mm-hmm. I thought it was quite interesting because it's yeah. sort of like I, no, no one else... I do like Josh Peters though, so I'll uh, I'll check that one out. But yeah, it's yeah, quite a watch. no, Tiger King is two episodes in and it's gone nowhere, and I'm really it's going bored, nowhere. So and it's and it's not good. It's not. And I know not... this. I know it's the the company that made Fire, but what made yeah. Fire good was it was only two hours it long. Was... And it was great. It was short. It was short, but it was also to the point. Fire and Festival. if you extend that... Personally, I didn't amazing. quite like Fire Festival, but okay. It wasn't amazing, but what it did was it told it was the story than, was, yeah. to be concise. 
Yeah. And there was no need to stretch it into a mini series. You could probably do it in like two, I maybe think, three I episodes. Think they could have done it in a whole hour and a half film. Yeah. And I, I really also, I also series. think, I also think they thought, God, we've got so much footage that we've got to just make mm. the most of it and make an eight-part, you know, series. Out yeah. Of it. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, think, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to return to Tiger. King. We are. We are not going to be talking about Tiger King. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And Wait, I, it had to be. It had to be mentioned though. It and ev- mentioned. everyone's yeah. talked about it. So, what, what else are we going to bring to the table that hasn't been brought already? Yeah. No uh, one's uh, talking about the Big Mama House trilogy. No, no one's, one's talking about, about Big Mama, Mama. <laughs> and that is that's a, a problem. <laughs> that's you a know, problem. I, we are I, going I, to solve that. I haven't seen Big Mama in years. It's <laughs> been a excited. very it's been a very long Luke, time since I last saw Big Mama. What? When was the last time you have seen Big Mama, and why? Oh, when I was seven. I I watched Big Mama's House uh, two quite a lot, but I've never seen the first one. Um, That's a, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've never seen him. Yeah, but so, uh, uh, exciting. Very exciting. We, um, very exciting. <laughs> um, I think. What's this, Luke? Karen. What? Sorry, Karen. Oh, well, um, I was just going to say, uh, oh, uh, got a comment asking if we're excited for Nick Cage's Joe Exotic. Personally, I am a big fan like- of a lot of Nick Cage's acting work. But I never liked Nick again, Cage. I'm not, I'm not excited for... Um, for I don't like maybe the film maybe the film will do it a better justice than the show did. maybe well before you before you dismiss nick cage luke nick cage has done some amazing acting and sorry the sorcerer's adaptation. apprentice the adaptation. sorcerer's apprentice luke luke we can't pick stuff after he went bankrupt okay he picked a lot of shit but <laughs> yeah. nick cage yeah. nick cage has made some great films he did adaptation which he's great in um face off it's goofy okay but that is a fun film um he's done so many great things so don't dismiss nick cage automatically because one day i will make us review free nick cage films no (laughs) no yeah i'll do it i'll do it luke so you know what though is i i really haven't been watching a lot since the last um the last episode i mean it's it's only been a (laughs) big mama bangs most definitely (laughs) I mean, yeah. Aside, it's from, only... aside from Blue Velvet, yeah. Um, yeah. What have I watched? I'm, I'm sure I watched something. Um, there is no, another okay. Misery's Crap Town incoming. A mini what? series, Luke. Your oh, dyslexia. Be a mini series. Oh, my mini series is getting the best of me. No, not your mini series. It's another mini series, the Tiger King thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, oh, I did not... watch something. I did watch something decent the other day. Oh uh, yeah, you've I heard of it. A letterbox uh, I, did, I watched uh, Leon the Professional. Yeah, I was gonna say what mm. I did notice that. What, what is Leon the Professional? Oh my god, um, Luke! That's you don't, don't know. know I'm, I'm surprised. Your, yeah. I figured college would be making you watch that film. Yeah, it's a classic. Um, I Jesus, Luke. I've probably stumbled across it in times gone by. Yeah, you do. So, quite like okay, it, mate. so basically, like it. it's um, it's a nice, nice full film. It's, Without spoiling uh, it, I will not spoil it. Uh, it's very good. By uh, oh, oh, sorry, good. If I, sorry for all the French people watching this, or one of you. Uh, <laughs> Luc I think, is how you pronounce yeah, it. Luc Besson. Luc Besson. I love it when Ryan pronounces the French ones. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it's um it's basically about a young girl who ends up being raised by a hitman it's got natalie portman in it yeah um natalie portman yep she's the she's the one who gets and raised who's, who, who plays the guy um <laughs> i do forget love, quite a lot yeah. love, love how ryan remembers that. john reno john reno oh john and reno. gary oldman is the baddie and gary um, oldman is the baddie yeah it's very gary good. oldman it's a Gary Oldman. Film. Gary what? Oldman. Yeah. But yeah. I what think Natalie Portman, being. Portman stole the show. I think she's the best actress or uh, best, best uh, cast member there. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. The no. One. It's it's she's really good in it. She's really good. And I think yeah. it's inspired my next Halloween costume. What? Who are you going to be, Natalie Portman's Leon. character or no, no, not or Leon. Leon. Although that would be <laughs> I was going to say. Was gonna be, I was going to say. Gonna be, if I was going to be Natalie Portman, that would be very funny. But no, I'll be. Uh, <laughs> he's, I'll 
No, he will Luke, be Leon. Luke's gonna go. Luke's gonna go as Big Mama and get cancelled. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, um, apparently, I've seen it. Apparently, you've seen it. Well, yeah. Boom. Okay. Um, yeah. Which doesn't, so, which doesn't surprise me that I've seen it because I probably have. I'm trying you to think here. What what have I watched between this time? Um, um, what did I watch really, the other day? This is really where we all check our letterbox. Actually, I tell you yeah. what. I. I thought I'd seen this, and I know it's sort of a film which is thrown around every now and then. I rewatched Ocean's Eleven the other day. Oh, All yeah, right, yeah, yeah. What did you make? And I actually, because basically, I always had this preconception that it wasn't going to be very good, and it was just going to be sort of. Oh this... no, no, Ocean's Eleven is good. It's just not a lot of the other ones are. Like the the yeah. first Ocean's Eleven um, film with Clooney is great. I think. Yeah, but that is the one I'm watching. Oh, it's good. Uh, it's good. I, mm -hmm. I've sort of started rewatching it because at the moment, all online media streaming platforms are completely dry. It's like the Sahara mm -hmm. Desert. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, apart from Amazon Prime, because they've got some great films. Yeah, well, uh, Prime are coming out with some really good stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just mm. Netflix are. Is there anything, it's anything either, you'd recommend on Prime? Tiger or King or or trash. Well, boys. Brrr, drum roll, please. It's time for Ryan to babble on for. F oh God, be quick, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've muted him. I've muted him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's back. Right. Okay, yeah. Um, I I'll make it short because I haven't really watched a lot of stuff, but I can. Uh, I can definitely recommend some some bits and pieces. So. Um, let me just head over to my list, my boys. Okay. Oh, it's all on me now. It's all focused on me. Okay. <laughs> so um, here's a few things on Prime that you should check out. Um, uh, there's a stop motion film called Mary and Max starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, he writes to this girl in Australia. They become friends. It's very good. Luke's laughing at me because um, he gets a kick out of this. Um, <laughs> A uh, good film that Luke has seen, which I recommended him, uh, Logan Lucky. I mean, it's not Oh, that, that is... Um, oh, I've no, seen that one. It's not... Um, that's a great movie. movie. But, yeah, it is just stellar. It's a great, great time, movie. isn't it, boys? And one of, I probably great want to tell you Craig's best films. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Mm. Not as good as I... him in Knives Out, though. Not I haven't seen that yet. Out. I'm yet no, to I see think, that. I think, I think he's better in Knives Out, actually, but he's still very good. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, what else? Oh, uh, what are you so doing on me, mate? You guys like... <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if any of you like uh, a little bit of Italian film, uh, I'd recommend some Federico Fellini films, Eight and a Half, and um, La Dolce Vita are both on <laughs> Amazon Prime now. They're very good, very good times, very Italian. Eight and a half is quite strange, but La Dolce Vita is a good classic Italian romance film. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend that to you. Liv saying, let, let's not talk about eight. eight. Yeah, she's talking about Ocean's Eight. Ocean's oh, Eight. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ocean's Eight, not a good time. Um, but yeah, so there, there's some recommendations. Uh, I might have some more next time, probably. You know, I think I think there we need go. To Ryan start, recommends. I think we need to start some sort of blog post area where Ryan can write sort of like movie recommendations. <laughs> oh yeah, Luke, um, you watched Darjeeling Limited um, since I talked about yeah, it. Last time. What did that you make true. of that? Darjeeling Limited. It is a. It's quintessentially a beautiful film, isn't it? It's just it looks it's, great. It's a lovely. It's a lovely way. It's, it's incredibly warm, it, like like it's soothing because it's the colours are really warm. Uh, the colour palette's very oranges, greens, blues, and it's just a really nice film. And it's quite a comforting one as well. And it's typical Wes Wes style, you know, central framing. His compositions are all very much, you know, centre of the frame. Wow. Everything's precisely wow. it placed. It's yeah. it's his it's his sort of genre convention. He's got his own genre, which is like Wes. You can sort of title yeah. it Wes. Um, <laughs> Definitely. But it was, it's a great, it's a lovely film. And it's worth a watch. What would um what? So let's let's uh, veer away from film. Any music, guys? Any music? No, I don't listen to music anymore. It I've... reminds me of work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got um I've been listening to a few. I've been listening things, to a lot mostly... of. Doja Cat, as much as I hate to admit it. We do like Doja Cat, though. She does make some slamming bots. I, I um, do like Doja Cat. 
Um, I, think I used to. I used to quite enjoy very Say good. So. It was okay, but that song's been rinsed like a sponge. So I'm going to um, think new, but I've come back to the Cure. Okay, no, well, yeah, but you've been playing that every night when we've been on call this week. He keeps <laughs> playing. I don't care if Monday's blue five times in a row, and he doesn't even play the whole song. He just op- he just plays that opening verse. And it's so annoying. I can't stress to you, everyone out there, how annoying it is to be on a phone call with Luke and Bram. When he <laughs> it is hard. Um, um, actually, I'll tell you what, I've, I've come back to a lot of old old songs recently, which I've sort of gone past. And I came back to uh, another Chris Isaac song from a couple of years ago uh, called Blue Hotel. That's a nice one. It's sort of like a right. the shadows feel with the sort of... Yeah. It's got I've, um, I've started to listening to uh, Fetch the Bolt Cutters by Fiona Apple. Hey, what do you think? Do you like um, it? I thought it was very unique. Uh, very unique alternative. <laughs> very, um, I, very. Didn't, I haven't finished it. Um, I wasn't fully sold, mm-hmm. to be oh. honest. I, I was a bit... Oh, okay. I was a bit like, okay, what is this person? Oh. But I think partly it was because I was very tired. And I was <laughs> what are you doing, the- Ryan? What are you doing, <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Here. Bit, oh. sorry I, I was being a bit sassy i was being a bit sassy but there. um it's probably just because i was very tired at the time and not in the right mood to listen to any of that it's, kind of music it's very much um one thing one i'm very looking forward album. to listen to is uh zeros by declan mckenna when that when that comes out okay, i'm not a fan actually. of declan not a fan no of course you aren't no. luke though <laughs> uh i've been going back to um a bit of future islands recently but okay not just, I, I came back not to just, today not just singles um their other album the far field which has got some great tracks on it um through the roses and shadows featuring debbie harry from the band blondie which is great uh and also the muppet movie soundtrack <laughs> it's um it's got some bangers in there if y'all haven't heard um can you picture that by dr teeth and the electric mayhem then um I don't know what you're doing. Just just listen to it. It's a good time. And uh, new Charlie XCX song. I finally understand. Very good. Bit of IDM. And uh, Sound and Color, the album by Alabama Shakes. Every now and then, you just got to go back to that album. Love Alabama so Shakes. Liv saying, Liv saying, saying for you, Alfie. I've had Still Run on repeat. Cheers, Alfie, for that. Still Run. Oh, Still Run by Wet. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> It's a great album, actually. Um, I don't believe it's... I believe it's called Still Run. It is a great album. 2018 alternative called Wet. It is something you can just listen to on repeat. It is an amazing Mm -hmm. album. Um, Very bright, very poppy, but not in your face. Um, A lot of really sweet harmonics and tones. It's just an amazing, amazing album. I think, Luke, you passed that on to me. Uh, What? Which one? Still Run. Still right. <laughs> so much music that passes through my library. There's so much music, yeah. But no, one hundred percent recommend. Still run an amazing, amazing album, and that's mm. from someone who, um, although is taking music, does not listen to a lot of music right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, sick um, of yeah. music. I've had I'm so of sick of fucking music. <laughs> um, also, I just haven't found anything good recently. I haven't. I haven't really been exposed to anything new. Honestly, just Future Islands and Alabama I, Shakes. I'll tell you what I always like. Alabama I Shakes wasn't a big fan of. Why? I'll tell you <laughs> I what. I, know. Listen, I can't remember because I, I listen, I've i still got their album Sound and Colour here. Um, mm. It all sounded the same. Uh, no but, way. No way, Jose. But, that album is I dynamic. Was, to be fair, I was, I, was listening, I was listening to it at work and I probably wasn't paying attention. Was but this I the Cheese Factory? <laughs> no, no, no. The Cheese I was gonna Factory. Say, can you imagine listening uh, to that? Actually, <laughs> that, is, that is actually a quality story which people love to hear. Can you... Shall we, yeah, Should I on, tell Alfie. the story of the Cheese we, Factory? Tell we, the story we, of the Cheese can we, Factory. Can we, can we have an Alfie Akers anecdote for today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, yeah, go on then. Are you going to switch the camera to me or something? Or... Do it, do it. Okay, yeah, story time, story time. Story time with Alfred Acres. Right. So, um... Oh, fuck. Okay, so I am, uh... I am... I was in December, uh, beginning of December, sort of late November, looking for work, 
Um, and I sort of went around the local town and literally just asked pretty much every establishment in there if they all had work. Uh, no one responded, um, probably because they did a background check. But um, well... <laughs> they found WTF of my cooking, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. But um, one thing, well, uh, least, least guy, so I just happened to be in this deli, and I asked the person at the shop if they had any positions. But this guy just so happened to be in there, so like, I've got a job for you. And uh, he's like, "Come with me out the out the back." And I said, "Well, what is it?" And he said, <laughs> um, "Dodgy." He said, "I was yeah, thinking where that the is a bit is... seedy." I was thinking that where the fuck is this going? Um, I've got a then... job for you, mate. <laughs> then he says, Do you like oh, cheese? Yeah. I um, I need you to wrap cheese for me. I said, like, "What?" He's like, "Wrap cheese." So I make cheese for a living. I need people to wrap it. Um, and I thought, "Oh, right. Well, okay, yeah, sure." So um. He gave me his uh, sort of, I gave him a CV, which I had on me at the time, and he gave me a leaflet and I sort of looked it over and I, I got the address. Um, they had to, they had to um, have a fake address for the leaflets because people kept visiting them. Why? Apparently. I don't know. People just turned up hoping to get some cheese. They want to go to the All cheese. Right. Were, you, were, you, were you getting paid for this? I was getting paid for this. So... Um, I turned up. I free. I had to about. I only ended up doing about three sessions because I was only on for December. So I ended about well, three weeks. How long were How long were your hours on it? Like, um, at least eight. I think Oof. eight hours Oof. was a long day. Oh, I've no. got about oh, seven to five. To, I think. Yeah. Mm. They were long so, days. I remember. They were long, long days. So the first day I got there. Um, I had got a terrible night's sleep the day before um, and basically he put me in this <coughs> tiny room and I just sat there, stood there all day just wrapping cheese, but I was fucking exhausted and um, I did a terrible, terrible job. Didn't you so, get bollocking? Yeah, I did. So the next day I came in and he went to me, he's like, listen, like, uh, oh, I can't remember what he said to me, but I basically got in trouble for it. So I was thinking, oh, fuck. <laughs> Um, and so basically, and then they got started do, getting me to do different things. Um, so I, I did all sorts. So I obviously wrapped cheese. Uh, one thing that was very meticulous was that I had to make cardboard boxes. So oh, they'd no. have like these big prints out and I just have to sit there, fold up boxes, do that, do that, create loads of stacks of them. Um, but I'd also be involved with this process called twisting. And basically what that involves is you'd get, so you go into the maturing rooms where the cheese are and you'd literally just have to flip the cheese, just horizontal, like just, just turn it around so that it wouldn't stick to the, uh, to the board. Yeah. And doing this, uh, for one particular cheese was very difficult, uh, cause it was called Lord of London. And I don't know if you ever know, Lord if you London. know your cheese, um, but it's <laughs> shaped like a cone, like Madonna's bra. It's like, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I so just, I, you know, I just remember the time yeah. when I told when I told Ryan that you worked in a cheese factory and he didn't believe <laughs> me. It took no, me about. Oh, no, I thought it was a joke. You thought, thought, thought you thought I was winding no, him up. I was like, oh yeah, no. he worked in a cheese but, factory. Um, like, the, the, uh, dyspraxic. <laughs> yeah, no, for a dyspraxic, it was not great work. I was um, going to say there was yeah. one point. But um, the the team were very nice, uh, and so was the yeah, all the staff were very nice. Um, we all got on very well, um, and they gave me a fuck ton of cheese, like just for free, like a What's big box get? full of cheese. Oh, it's delicious! Really lovely yeah, stuff. I, yeah. I, I, um, I so think... buy Aesop and Walker. There you go. I think back to the time. <laughs> as much I... as the job was bad, you you, you rep the, no, the job. No, the job wasn't bad. I think I was bad for the job, but um, fair enough. I, yeah. I had its moments. It's just because I was. Um, but I, I, I got everything done. Um, it hurt my back cause I've suffered with a lot of back pain before and doing one day, um, where I had to twist all these little lines. I was in a tiny room, probably about half the size of my room. So quite small and it's on the walls was stacked up with crates to the ceiling of, um, these crates, uh, like grocery crates of Lord of London. And I had to take off the top one, twist it, put it on the bottom and take it or take it and do it again. So, and that took me 
hours. That literally took me like three or four hours. You know, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of when Ryan got the job at the bakery, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan got this job at the bakery, and I remember I solidly pissed myself because I thought, bloody hell, they're going to pay you in rolls or something. And I, I don't know why, but you nothing ever happened of that, did it? You sort of got this job. No. And, you never went in. It was like they'd call on me if they needed me, and oh. like I did it. I did it like four times. Never, never got a, a call back. So I, Would... I, I thought I did pretty I, all right. I, I'm still looking for work. I do a small shift yeah. at this go over at the gym, um, which is lovely, but it's not really something that I get paid in. I just get a free membership. Um, yeah. So I'm still looking for work because uh, I have not got a lot of money <laughs> so yeah. um have you um, it's probably you even harder to get a job at the moment mm -hmm. well, uh, have, have, you, have, have you looked into fiverr i have got a fiverr no, no but like um, why why you've got time now i've got a fiverr but no one's i've got no traffic mm. so i'm not well, making well, any no one no one's seen it i've just been doing video editing yeah, I know, but no one, there's about, no one's bothered. No one's coming. What are you trying to, to sell? Mixing. Mixing. Mm. Mixing, selling mixing. That's interesting. Yeah, but you know what might be quite a good one is if you try to sell like podcast jingles. Ooh. Because mm. so many people are doing this right now that it's just becoming yeah. like a really lucrative like market. Yeah. I'm like going to try and time. I'm going to try and stop this conversation before Luke goes full Philip Bloom over here. So um <laughs> don't want to don't want to you know get people to um I don't know what's the word bored. <laughs> you can, you, you, might, gonna, you might be able to uh, do that about Philip Bloom. One of, one of the messages yeah. has just said what about the drums Alf, 6 to 9s and I'm oh, 6 is to 9s good song. It's that yeah. song? I, 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 I was like. the distributor yes. of that song I will say that but um so yeah you hate the drums i don't like the Honestly, drums it's such a good song man yeah i like the song but i don't like the drums how many times what, have I... What, what is it about the drums you don't like they don't, they're not mixed well how are they not mixed well what what because about they them are not mixed well they are uncompressed and it doesn't suit the song you, you what... really don't like unmixed well percussion alfie can you not, not just that. ruins it can you not just sort of close your eyes and just appreciate that it's like a feel-good song no, the music no. video is <laughs> terrible. Though the music video is really bad. No, oh, it's awful. I, I, I do enjoy the song, um, but the drums are bad, mm. and it stood out to me because they are poorly mixed. Yeah. But anyway, back on stuff we've seen again. That's what, what we, I need to say. It was uncompressed and it didn't suit the song. If it was a what sort of yeah, what sort of plans have we got coming up then? What we're going to sort of do with this? As well, the months progress, obviously, because we're still in <clears throat> lockdown. Well, um, we've still got something coming out soon, which is very exciting, um, that we talked about last week. The new Little Farmer John special, um, which should be yeah. should be coming out um, this weekend or next week. That'll be exciting. Yeah, yeah. it should be coming um, out this week. I'm still editing it. And that will that's sort of a lead into a bigger project, which again we can't properly talk about just yet. But that's yeah. sort of um that's sort of linked with Loudmouth as a whole, as a, a brand, if you want to call us that. Um but, uh, but we that's can't, gonna be very yeah, exciting. We can't talk about the, the big project right now. Yeah. And also um also we're we're gonna once this whole thing is over, we have um got an upgraded studio in the making, which we will be doing podcasts from regularly which will be exciting mm. um so we're looking forward to that yeah i think we will do one of your inspired uh year seven videos year seven videos yeah, yeah alpha you oh, know i'm is. completely yeah. confused who is that oh, uh, it's a person from college <laughs> oh okay okay <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're looking we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to um, getting better, getting bigger. I mean, that sounded ego -y, <laughs> but <laughs> well, um... I don't think you need any help getting any bigger, right? <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, evil. <laughs> evil. <laughs> Honestly. Well, anyway, um, is that all today, then? Oh, yeah, so I, 
I think so. Um, anything else? TV before we go? Any TV guys or no? No TV. But uh, Killing we... Eve. I'm a couple of episodes behind. I think an episode behind. Not very good. What so do you far. think of Killing Eve? I was going to say because I'm not. First two seasons like... were really really good. First oh, really? season not sold. I was um, going to say because I'm I'm I quite like Phoebe Waller Bridge. I love Fleabag. I think that's perfect that show. But I think you I like it, Ryan. Get... Really? Like, I, could, Luke, I didn't really Luke, get it. Maybe not. Um, oh, no. Luke would hate it. I know Luke, Luke would hate it. Luke would hate it. it. Ryan, but you'd like it, I think. Give it I'll, give it, I'll give it a retry because I watched it's the first weird. episode. It's really and... weird. Yeah. Um, it gets weirder. Yeah. But the third season so far, on the episode three, I'm not sold. It's not okay. going anywhere. But yeah. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. I watched, um, I watched a very good... Uh, okay. Uh, I watched The Mandalorian, everyone. Right, yeah. Um, just a quick one. It's okay. Last... It's okay. okay. It, yeah. It's it's nothing great. Six out of ten. Um, mm. but uh, I I swindled. I did the Disney Plus swindle. I um I got the trial and got rid of it um mm. today. Um, but <laughs> I uh I uh I I've been watching a lot of The Simpsons and I cannot recommend I enough. Love you the... do have. I love have The Disney Simpsons. Plus. I Watch fucking the, love the Simpsons. It's, it's the best show ever. But mm. if you have Disney Plus, please watch season two, episode two, um, Simpson and Delilah, because that episode of The Simpsons what? hasn't. I don't know the names, but if you tell me what happened, I'll know it. Which oh one well, is it? Um, Homer gets hair. Is the is the yeah, big tagline for it, mate? I think Honestly. I've seen every episode of The Simpsons from like one yeah. to ten. Ever. Oh mate. <laughs> just seeing Those first ten seasons yeah. are perfect. Yeah, I just have I have seen... to say I have to say I wasn't as much of a fan. Of course Simpsons. you weren't, Luke. You hate everything. But um <laughs> but season two, episode two is wow. um is amazing. It got me crying at the end. It's a heavy episode. Please watch it. Uh, uh, it, it yeah, Simpsons is probably Simpsons. one of my top five all time favourite TV sorry, shows. Sorry, you cried oh, yeah, at, you cried at the Simpsons. Luke, you have no idea, man. You have you no cried, idea. You cried at the Simpsons. You cried. And on that bombshell, and on that bombshell, Ryan cried at the Simpsons. We Honestly, it's guys. a really good portrayal of toxic masculinity. We will see you guys later. So I'm going to say my goodbyes. Alfie, do you want to say or? Yeah. Um, follow me on Twitter at Alfie Acres One. Subscribe to me on YouTube, Alfie Acres. I'm thinking about doing a video about Lily C. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I, I've already recorded it and edited it, but I'm not sure if I want to publish it. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, buy my services on Fiverr. Uh, at Alfie Acres Music. <laughs> uh, right, I will. T- I'll chuck in some nudes as well for a discount. Price. <laughs> oh, oh, no, on, your, on your only fans. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. Okay, me. Um, right before we go. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, video essay about that Simpsons episode that made me cry coming soon because Luke has no oh, soul nice. or heart. <laughs> anyway, oh, I on that, that note, we will see you guys later. See All right. Everybody. Thank you for watching, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>